Coming up on TechZilla, browse safe from anywhere or keep your Minecraft server private with the same free and easy VPN app. The coolest case ever, some frank advice about water cooling, headphones, and how to fill an iPad. So heat up some hot cocoa and drop in the marshmallows, because TechZilla starts now. This episode of Techzilla is made possible by The Ben Heck Show, building, modding, and electronics brought to you exclusively by Element 14. Squarespace and Gazelle, the fastest and easiest way to sell and recycle your gadgets. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Welcome to Techzilla, hands-on reviews of the latest tech and how to make the most out of the gear you've already got. Whether you're a beginner, tech support for your friends and family, if you've got a question about tech, or why no one should ever watch The Human Centipede, we've got an answer for you. Yeah, and don't ever ask Roger about the human centipede. I really have nothing else to say about the matter. Just remember, what has been seen cannot be unseen. <sighs> no news today other than the whole seeing, unseeing, not happening thing. We're, we're pre-taping before the President's Day holiday, so it's a little early for news. So I thought we'd talk internet caps. George Yay. Call 4444 tweets, just for you and I to feel better okay. about, about the cap app. We were talking about, uh, Robert, last show, we were talking mm -hmm. about the, the whole 250 gigabyte monthly cap on Comcast mm -hmm. and how that can make backing up multiple terabytes of media files a yeah. multi-year saga, or at least multi-month saga. But George 4444 tweets, at Patrick Norton mentions the delete expletive internet caps here in Australia on this week's at Techzilla. ISPs down under really do suck. Let me tell you something, George in Australia, you're really going to be pissed off when you hear this email from Yi in Singapore. Yep, Yi writes, hey guys, saw that you guys talked about the prices of internet services overseas. I'm glad to present to you with the prices here in Singapore. We have no such thing as capping and speed are consistent depending on which part of the island you live in and which ISP you've got. Best part, the government is currently upgrading all the copper fibers to optic fiber and prices are great. You can check the links below for the prices from all of our three ISPs. You really got to wonder, what are the ISPs charging us for? With regards, ye. And then you link the prices from uh, M1 and Singtel mm -hmm. and Starhub. And when you factor in the exchange rate, we get 100 mega. If, if these deals were available we're here, here yeah. in the Bay Area, we could get 100 megabit per second down, 10 megabit per second up for like 10 bucks more than we pay for 16 megabit down, one megabit up Comcast service <sighs> here. Yeah, George yeah. is probably weeping somewhere in Australia right about now. Don't kick the kangaroos, it's all I'm saying, man. <laughs> they kick back. <laughs> they kick back. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> they don't call it a kangaroo punch for nothing. No. We were also, you and I, last time you and I were, we were talking about Memtest 86 Plus. Yes. And I may have had a complete brain failure, a senior moment. I just want to make it clear, it doesn't run under Windows 7. The really cool site that was talking about how to use Memtest 86 Plus to test your machine's memory is a Windows 7 site, but it actually, it's a boot disk. So it runs on Windows machines, it runs on OS 10 machines. Mm -hmm. um, the latest version that came out uh, has updates for Sandy Bridge and Fusion, uh, Intel Sandy Bridge and AMD oh, Fusion. interesting, but I guess. Yeah. It's a live CD or DVD or a thumb drive, and it boots off that, and then it gets its memory tested. I guess on. I got confused. I was I was sitting there because I was I was sitting there talking to you about like I think it runs under Windows Seven, and I'm like the next day I was like, oh, what were you? Because I've been running that program for like years. I, <laughs> I always like, thought that it was Windows only, or well, Windows no, it's, and, it's and a things boot running. Disc. Under, okay, gotcha. It's been, it's, it's been it basically once they went to Intel Max, they did a. a mm. They updated it, and I want to say 2008, so it works under uh, OS 10. Oh, basically, well, that's better. It's, it's available for more people out there. It's awesome. So anyone can use it. Oh, and Veronica, by the way, has another side gig. Uh, astronomy, astronomy, I can't say astronomy, anemone. anemone. Astronomy, anemone. Astronomy, anemone, NASA, JPL, Caltech. You, what was that? Was that, that was the space anemone. Yes, the space anemone. Um, I did a little co-hosting segment with the uh, space anemone, and things didn't go so well oh. at the end, um, as you can probably see from the video. I think you just eclipsed your star. Get it? Get it? I'm a star. Uh, Veronica, leave early.
So uh, other than that, was JPL cool? Yeah, JPL was awesome. <laughs> JPL, I've, I've been up to uh, JPL once before, previous to that, and this time we were hanging out at the Caltech offices, and we shot a little video for them to kind of help get some information out there and get people excited about astronomy. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun, although I'm still cleaning off like uh, alien spittle after weeks. <laughs> weeks later, I'm still getting digestive fluid out of my hair. Handy wipes. Yeah, handy wipes, lots of <laughs> yeah, handy wipes. Always travel with handy wipes. Email! Yes, Dr. Matt writes in, hey Veronica and Patrick too. My kids, 11 and 6, and I have found great engineering slash creating joy with Minecraft. So much so that I've created a Minecraft server on an iMac that sits in the land so we can all play in the same world. We would love for friends and family to share in the fun, and I'd also like to play during lunch from work. <laughs> Is there a way to securely connect to the server from the outside world? I was thinking it would work with a VPN, but I have no idea how to set one up. Is there another solution? Thanks so much for your help. Shh. Bang, Dr. Matt. That was so enthusiastic. Bang. I'm officially calling you Rocket Girl now. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> your timing is amazing, Dr. Matt. I was writing up a, a DIY segment about securing your internet access when you're browsing. Like, basically, ah. you're in the coffee shop. Here's how to set up a VPN and browse securely. And, of course, I'm like a third of the way through it. And Adam Pash over at Lifehacker.com posts how to secure and encrypt your web browsing on public networks with Hamachi and Provoxy, which is actually an even cooler thing than what I was trying to do with Hamachi. So go read that. There's a link in the show notes. If you want to feel safer using Wi-Fi hotspots when you travel or down at the local coffee shop, seriously, you should use a VPN to secure your Wi-Fi access. A VPN, for anyone that doesn't know, is a virtual private network. Essentially, it's encrypted connections between machines so they can use the very public and very exposed internet without exposing their packets. Hamachi, essentially a no-configuration centrally managed or hosted VPN, that means it's pain-free, administrated by someone else, and all you do is download the client. The folks at LogMeIn own it now, and it's free for non-commercial use. 16 folks max for the free version and 256 for the commercial version if you have a very large family. Oh, yes, yeah. A very basically, large Minecraft playing family. If, well, yeah, I mean, if you can't fit 16 people on your server, then you're you're moving up in the world. I, I think Hamachi's amazing. Um, it's been around for a long time. It's mm -hmm. pretty slick. Um, and Dr. Mack, you need to check out minecraftforum.net. It's a giant collection of Minecraft happiness. But specifically, there's an amazing write-up, how to set up a server without port forwarding using Hamachi, which walks you through the process. It's pretty easy. You install Hamachi on the machine, you fire up the network button, you create a new network and password for Hamachi. That's the one you're going to share with all your friends around the net. Then you configure the Minecraft server with the IP address from the Hamachi window, and well, Mr. Duskling over at the forums deserves your traffic, so go to the links in the show notes. But essentially, the, the only downside to this is you are probably going to have to have all of the clients in the house mm. using mm. Hamachi to VPN because you're using the IP address. Basically, gotcha. you need the, the Hamachi IP address, or the IP address that Hamachi assigns, and you're going to use for your Minecraft server. You're going to have to use that both internally on your home network and externally with the people out in the world to do that so everybody can play on the same server. If I'm wrong about that, do me a favor, email us, techzilla at revision3. And if you've got a tech question, we want it. How to use product reviews. Veronica's favorite sidearm when she's battling zombies. Fire them to TechZilla at Risen3.com or Twitter at TechZilla at Veronica at Robert Heron or at Patrick Norton. Yes, after the break, Kyle Bennett from Hard OCP talks water cooling your PC, the ultimate case for a hot PC, and why you might not want to water cool at all. But first, it's time to thank one of our sponsors, The Ben Heck Show. Join modding wizard Ben Heck and friends as they build and modify a host of amazing community inspired creations. In the latest episode, Ben builds a super can cooler. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you exclusively by Element 14, the online store and community for electronics design engineers. Last episode, Kyle Bennett from Hard OCP was giving us the scoop on how to get the best power supply for your money, the one that won't kill your data and make your CPU suffer. But he also had some great advice for a viewer about getting better cooling for your PC and whether or not you really should be water cooling at all. For time consideration, we had to cut it last week, so here it is right now. So Mark wrote in, you saw one of our graphics card things a couple weeks ago, and he's got an idea for a PC build he's going to work on this summer. He says, I'm trying to make a PC that has great performance, but it is also as quiet as possible. Core i7, two GPUs. He's looking at the Corsair Half-X case because of his large fans. What other suggestions do you guys have? Is liquid cooling worth it or reliable? I don't like the idea of it failing and water being near my PC. Thanks, Mark in Charlotte, North Carolina. Kyle, I, I wanted you to answer this because you have more water-cooled PCs 
in your like office slash house than anyone I know? This, this is an interesting question because I had this exact same problem here this last year because I was running SLI, uh, GTX 480 SLI, and those cards were loud, and those cards were hot, and they were just, they were ugly loud. <laughs> um, what I ended up doing was Silverstone makes a series of cases called uh, the Fortress, mm -hmm. and they make a series of cases called the Raven. And both of what these have done is taken a regular ATX uh, case and tilted it 90 degrees. So now your cards are, are up and down instead of being across. So everything exhausts out the top of the case. At the bottom of these cases, they have very big 180 millimeter fans. Mm -hmm. They're low RPM, but they're high CFM fans. They're not very loud. In fact, you don't hear them at all. But they move but a lot of air. One is Silverstone's basically creating a very high uh, positive pressure case. So you're getting lots of ambient air into that case. And in the case of my 480s in SLI, and now my 580s in SLI, they're back in the Raven 2 case again. It makes them run nearly silent. Wow. So it's, it's just bringing that much ambient air into the case. So, so I, it's all about airflow. And, I, man, I tell you what, I've had big fans and all that crap forever. And this is probably one of the best solutions I've seen. So I, what I'm hearing here is, you know, unless you're really in love with water cooling, skip the water cooling, buy a better case. Because the engineering hack on that is so obvious and so brilliant. You just put well, the hot um, stuff at the top of the case. But the hot, well, the problem with his though here is he said he's going to be running dual graphics cards. Right. And that's generally where, the, where more of the noise comes from. Mm -hmm. I water cool this case as well. <laughs> I water cool the CPU. I don't water cool my GPUs. Mm -hmm. When you start changing out GPUs, it gets so expensive to change out the, the plates and the heat sinks for them. And it's just generally a pain in the ass, you know, trying to get it. It is. It is. It just is. But with the CPU, you can you can do that so easily. In that case, with the in the Raven 2 I have mm -hmm. with the 580 SLI, I've used one of the Corsair H50, one of the uh, one of the fully enclosed systems. Mm -hmm. And it run, it does a great job at cooling that uh Cool that GPU. And the Corsairs are nice because they're completely sealed. You don't have to, you're, you're not sitting there filling a tank next to your PC. You're not running tubing in. You don't have to worry about whether or not you got the clamp on there tightly or squeezed down. And that was his other thing. Is, is liquid cooling worth it or reliable? Number one, yes, it is worth it. Number two, mere reliability. If, if you cool water, you, you water cool long enough, something's going to go wrong. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's just the no. Way I've, it. I've I've got I've got a dead motherboard hanging on the wall. <laughs> so if, if you don't like the idea of water in your case, then don't put water in your case unless it's in one of these enclosed systems. Um, I think uh, Antec's about to come out with a new one. Mm -hmm. Corsair has a couple of theirs. I mean, so they, they work really, really good. They're good for what they are, but. You know, when you start running hoses and all that stuff, something's going to get wet sooner or later. If you're not committed, don't take the dive. Kyle, awesome, awesome information as always. Great spiel on overclocking. The TI came out recently. What's coming up on hardocp.com? Oh, big things this next week? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, go to hardocp.com the week after that. Kyle Bennett, the man who founded it, runs it, oversees the mayhem. Good testing, good information. I highly recommend it. Coming up, we got some headphone advice. Headphones. We like headphones. Yes. And, and, and more viewer questions. Right now, though. Time to thank one of our sponsors. Squarespace. Squarespace offers users a flexible solution for anyone looking to create a blog, personal portfolio, or any kind of website. No matter what level of coding experience you have, Squarespace can provide the tools needed to create a high-end, complex website that is still uniquely your own. And don't worry if you come across any questions or issues. Squarespace also offers every single user 24-7 support. They are there for you. Plus, Squarespace has a brand new social widget for geolocation services. Display your most recent check-ins from Foursquare, Gowalla, and Facebook places on a live Google map. Squarespace is the only web publishing platform with a native built-in solution for displaying your check-in data. The widget is totally customizable and fully integrated with a Squarespace style editor. For those of you constantly on the move, Squarespace's iPhone app lets you publish to your blog on the go and do comment moderation. Get push notifications to approve new comments, mark existing comments as spam, reply to comments and more, all right from your iPhone. Many of the internet's highest traffic web pages are powered by Squarespace, not to mention many of the personal pages of Revision 3 hosts and personalities and swordandlaser.com. Go to www.squarespace.com slash to get a two-week free trial and learn more.
Looks like it's time for another website we just can't get enough of. A website that we just can't stay away from because it's too useful, too funny, or just too darn irresistible. This week's pick, mapcrunch.com. Dan D over on our Facebook page suggested this week's site, mapcrunch.com. MapCrunch uses Google Street View to take you on a randomized adventure across the world. First, select which countries you'd like to see, unless you want it to be totally random and just drop you any old place. For example, we can select France, Mexico, and Switzerland, and then it will only show us street views in those places. You can even tell it to only go to cities if the idea of looking at tons of scenic hillsides and highways through the countryside isn't just interesting enough for you. To get even more specific, you can select the My Map feature, then just drag the map and zoom in and out to pick an area of your choosing. Then just press Go to see your very own map. If you find a street view you really like, add it to the Map Crunch Gallery or share it with your friends on Twitter, Facebook, or over email. So do a little exploring today from the safety of your desk with Map Crunch. Ready for a headphone question? Oh, yeah. Stan in NorCal emailed us writing, Yo, what up, Zilla Tex? This sounds youthful. Perhaps you should read this one. All right. I have a question about some cans. Right now, I have some Sony CDR580s. Bought them when they first came out, then upgraded to the Sony MDR-V900 HDs. Love them. Now I'm looking for a more noticeable step up in performance. I have my eye on some Sennheiser HD 598s. What's your jazz on these cans? Will I notice a difference, or should I settle on some Sennheiser or HD 558s. I do not currently have a headphone amp. I use them on my PC with the Creative Sound Blaster X5 Titanium Fatality Professional Sound Card. I just listen to music. I don't spit rhymes or nothing. You feel me? Word. Thanks, Texilla crew. Keep up the great work. Stan and NorCal. Oh, Man, boy. I just really proved my... Word indeed. Word indeed. <laughs> indeed. Yes. Uh, so the uh, Sony MDR V900 HDs might not be audiophile nerd approved headphones, um, mm. but they're very, very good. They just say Sony instead of Sennheiser or AKG, so they're not as otaku ish. Yeah, there's certain points, like, there's certain points where you'll be talking to somebody and you realize that they're not really into audiophile gear because they're looking for the ultimate sound. They're into mm -hmm. audiophile gear because they want to seem more exclusive than yeah. you. Hey man, I have used, I mean, I, I you know, I, I, I like my Sony headphones. I've had yeah. Sony headphones for years and years and years. I don't use them for earbuds anymore, but mm -hmm. for cans, I've, I've had Sony's, you yeah. know, as far back as I can remember. And that's not even, I'm not saying that just because I have, like, my other shows on, on Sony, no, 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 you know, no. I, like, mean, I, I just, I've, I have used Sony's for a long time. Sony MDRs, and Jim Latterback uses yeah. them. I have a pair of the Sony MDRs that I've had for about a thousand years. I'm going to say the 85s or 90s, the little brother to the pair you have. They're the, good, Yeah, the first things classic. I spent a lot of money on was I spent back when they were like 250 bucks the uh, the MDR V700s mm -hmm. those were like the DJ headphones right. with the tilt tilting ones I used those when I was back in college doing doing audio um, like projects right. and that kind of thing and I needed a good pair of headphones and that was like the most money I'd ever spent on anything of my <laughs> own that was not like my a college car. tuition no I didn't need, like oh, I didn't, right. you... yeah so it was big. So, Sony's. Or say, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with the Sony's you've got, right? The Sennheiser HD 598s, they look like a style nod, or I should say a style mod to the Sennheiser HD 595s. They look almost exactly like the 595s, except they have sort of this cream color instead of the gunmetal titanium you usually find on, on Sennheisers. And yes, the Burlwood appointments, and I believe there's a bit of chrome on the, uh, on, on the phones you're talking about, as in Ooh. inspired by luxury car interiors. Some folks think the $150 HD 595s and the $230 598s sound pretty much identical, but some reviewers on headfi.org give the nod to the 598s with their Burlwood appointments and cream color. Personally, I'd keep the 900 you already have. Think about playing with a different outboard DAC, not to take anything away from the Fatality, but I'm not always the hugest fan of Creative's DACs. They are very good. They do a lot of great things these days. But definitely think about getting a headphone app, which can do really neat things to the low-end response, the mids on your headphones. Um, the Sennheiser 558 you mentioned, they're a classic. Uh, Headroom, aka headphone.com, calls them well-mannered and smoothly detailed, and that they'll synergize cleanly with MP3 recordings and low-bitrate digital files. Because they're not, the 558s are nice, but they're not insanely revealing. Like, super high-end headphones, you start getting that $250, $350 area, you start noticing every flaw in badly encoded audio files. Mm. And because they reveal everything. That doesn't make it a better listening experience. No. You know? Sometimes it I makes mean, it a sometimes, worse. 
<laughs> glossing over some of the imperfections can be an okay thing. Yeah, I mean, taking a taking a black, I love Black Flag. Black Flag is one of my favorite bands of all time, but playing Black Flag through like $5,000 worth of audio here means you hear every bad choice and busted ass microphone they use in recording and mixing that album. So that could be part of the experience, but I, I gotta say, if you're running with a lot of low bitrate MP3s or iTunes downloads and you wanna go, you know, you, you might wanna go with a 558s or re-encode your audio collection to lossless files, then reevaluate whether or not you think you need to upgrade the headphones. But I gotta say, a headphone amp, I, I would, I, you got a nice set of headphones, I would throw a headphone amp in there or an outboard DAC, spend some money there, and, and make sure you've got the best possible source files for your audio, and then start thinking about new headphones. Hey, let's thank one of our sponsors, Gazelle. They accept more than 300,000 products. Speaking of upgrading your headphones from over 20 different electronic categories, shipping is free on any item of value. And in most cases, Gazelle will even send you a box to ship them your gear with. For you green folks out there, Gazelle makes all the recycling partners adhere to some strict policies. No exports, no landfills, and tons of data security standards. Why is that important? So your freaking old MP3 player doesn't end up being vaporized on a sheet metal piece of steel in India for the components. Trust me, people, Gazelle is a great way to get cash to upgrade the latest iPhone or Android phone. You can learn a lot more just by going to gazelle.com. Gabriel, out in Chicago, wrote in asking us, after watching the last episode, I realized that Texilla needs more guns. Or maybe a gun show on Revision 3 called Gunzilla. I'm just saying. I got all the guns you need right here, baby. And here. Seriously, why don't you want anything else? This is pretty. <laughs> I have, I'm fully loaded. There have been some There's Nerf some War that. outbreaks in the Revision 3 offices recently, probably due to the combination of too much ice cream and being inside too long with the rain. Whoa! Hey. Whoa! Fully loaded Nerf <laughs> gun coming through. <laughs> See if I can take out. I got Tux right in the face. You shot Tux in the right face. Right in the face. All right. We got this email from Aaron who wanted to know on a week, recent weekly episode of Techzilla, Patrick used a carbon screen cleaner on his and Veronica's iPhone screens. What is this product exactly? Got the lens pen on you? Yeah. I, you know what? I don't. Why? Because uh, my boss borrowed it and I haven't gotten it back yet. I use lens. You shot me! <laughs> So I own like at least I three lens pens for binoculars, camera lenses, rifle scopes. Um, I'm hoping I get my third one back from my boss. He's obsessed. Roger uses them on his camera lenses. The product I showed off that you were looking at was the bigger version called the Screen Clean with the K, which is actually up on sale at the lens pen site for 20 bucks now. They also do a huge one for HDTVs, which also works really, really well for computer monitors and notebooks called the Lens Pen Vidimax for 25 bucks. I highly recommend them. Uh, the lens pens are great if you travel a lot or have a small child that gets their little greasy fingerprints on yeah. your camera lens. I feel like we cover more and more gadget cleaning technology. <laughs> it's been a gadget week, cleaning week. Week by week. I love this thing. This is so great. I just uploaded a video to YouTube of the whole arsenal we have and the rest of the Revision 3 library. None of them actually there. belong to the Techzilla team. Like, they belong to everybody in the building apparently bought Nerf guns except yeah. for us. My YouTube username is Early Sound if you want to see the full collection of Nerf guns <laughs> that we've got in there. Finally, Rick in Minnesota asked us, my darling wife gave me a fully loaded iPad for Christmas and I can't figure out what to do with all the onboard flash memory. I've been collecting articles in a set of alphabetized hierarchical directories for about a decade, but there's no obvious way to put this library onto the tablet. There seems to be no way to copy a set of directories to the iPad. I did copy the library to a Dropbox account. This solves the problem as long as I'm in network range or read previously retrieved files. But then what's the point of having all this inboard storage? It's as if the iPad doesn't have a hierarchical file system. I can't say that word very well. I'm sure it does somewhere. There's just no way to use it, I guess. I can't even copy stuff from an SD card. Rick in Hastings, Minnesota. So, Rick, yes. Yeah. So we're going to assume that all those files are probably PDFs, right? Um, in which case, you could drag them or import them into the book section of iTunes, where you can then sync them with, you're so distracted, where you can sync them with uh, iBooks on your iPad. Um, that's the easiest way to get them there, short of emailing them all to yourself, which would be a total pain. Yeah. Um, it would be a nightmare, actually. A total Dropbox. Nightmare. It, it's yeah. kind of like there's. Without jailbreaking, I don't know of a particularly pain-free way of just dumping files in the frickin' machine. I, I mean, 
Yeah, no, I that's I can't without jailbreaking. Right. I can also not figure out a way to do that. I mean, Dropbox works, but you do have to be in in network range right. or Wi-Fi or or 3G. I tried it in airplane mode earlier just to see if even if I synced mm -hmm. Dropbox previously, if I could access the files, and it was a no go. At least yeah. I couldn't find figure out the secret sauce to make it work offline. Um, yeah, if Texilla fans out there have any idea of how to do this, please chip in. If you've heard of another method, um, we'd love to to tell Rick. We'd love to figure it out. For ourselves, without jailbreaking, preferably, because it doesn't sound like that's something he's he's too interested in. And I just find jailbreaking to be difficult and time-consuming. It is getting trickier and annoyinger. I may just be lazy too. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we want you to represent Texel Revision Three. You don't need a graduate degree from an Ivy League school to be a ambassador for Revision Three. No, no highfalutin family connections or big campaign donations. Nope. If you want to help to announce new show launches, partner news and events, control the swag at meetups and more, score sneak peeks. Sneak peeks. That's a tough one to say. Frontline access for live shows and custom swag of your very own. We're talking about getting in the door at what our marketing maven calls one of the hottest companies in online TV. <laughs> then you should head to revision3.com slash street team right away. Don't forget, we want your questions. Techzilla at revision3.com. And subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash techhd. And as always, you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash techzilla. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Till next time, you've been watching Techzilla. Get to the chopper.